evening and welcome to Meticulous Moments. My name is Yonita Kapp. You can reach me at meticulousmacarons at gmail.com or find me on LinkedIn. Since the COVID-19 pandemic hit the globe, I've had the wonderful privilege to meet a wide array of fantastic individuals. These individuals have truly touched my life in so many positive ways. Amongst this group of people, there are authors, public speakers, life coaches, poets, leaders and visionaries. They are the unsung heroes of our time. Therefore, I decided to start the Meticulous Moments movement out of a sense of my gratitude. It is my way of giving back to the community. Let us share and reshare their stories in an effort to build a better society. Good evening and welcome to the Meticulous Moments podcast where we facilitate community upliftment through leadership development. And today we have the wonderful privilege of spending time with the amazing Chris Tice. What a wonderful individual he is. Awesome, stunning, strong leader, good friend. Here are some more details about Chris. Chris first began his leadership journey early in life by earning the Eagle Scout Award, the highest achievement or rank attainable through the Boy Scouts of America, BSA. Utilizing lessons learned through life and a desire to serve others, he continued his leadership journey through sales, business and eventually firefighting within the city of Wichita. Due to persistent injuries, Chris took a leap of faith by retiring early from the fire department and becoming a full-time coach and speaker. He now fully seeks to explore and live in the greatness God has called him to and created him for and inspires others to do the same. I had an absolutely magnificent interview with Chris. He's such an open-spirited person. He's such a giving leader and he just creeps into the hearts of many. He's really someone that I look up to and he really opened up my mindset about so many concepts of leadership. I invite you to enjoy this wonderful interview with us and I would like to say thank you Chris for your knowledge and your experience for making time for the Meticulous Moments podcast audience. And with that we give over to our very very special treasured guest Chris Tice. Good evening, Meticulous Moments audience. Thank you so much for joining us for yet another vibrant session here at the Meticulous Moment podcast where we facilitate community upliftment through leadership development. And this evening we have the wonderful privilege of spending time with the amazing Chris Tice. How are you, Chris? Fantastic. How are you doing, Juanita? And thank you. Uh, <laughs> I'm doing so well. I'm looking forward to this interview so much I'm so psyched that you are here. I, I'm excited to be here. This is incredible. And uh, kudos to you. We were just talking about it before she hit record, but uh, <laughs> it's either early or late, however she wants to look at it, because we are on opposite sides of the planet. <laughs> and uh, it's just, it's a joy to know that, you know, what God brings together is always going to be amazing. And uh, I'm just, I'm excited at this opportunity. I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for everyone that would get to listen to this and hear this. And and I just pray blessings over us and, and over anyone who hears what we have to say tonight. Amen. Thank you very much. And that sets the tone in such a lovely manner for the session. I mean, I can't agree with you more. Now, we've uh, had a virtual coffee. We've, uh, you know, talked on Messenger. We've been on the same Zoom calls and I got to know you through all of it. But would you like to introduce yourself to the audience for those members who are not acquainted with you yet? Sure. Uh, my name is Chris Tice. Uh, kind of my formal bio is I'm one in whom Christ dwells. I, I believe in Jesus and his saving grace, of which I have been saved multiple times over uh, due to my own uh, follies or follies that I've been a part of. And uh, uh, yeah, I just, uh, I'm an early retired firefighter. I uh, had persistent injuries and just got to a point where I had to pray. And uh 
I, uh, at the time, she's now five, but my two-year-old daughter uh, wanted me to pick her up to tell her good night. And when I went to pick her up, my back went out uh, to oh. the point I couldn't even tie my own shoes. And so I had to make a very, very courageous decision. Mm-hmm. And my wife and I were talking and uh, of course I had to call in sick. I couldn't go to work. And I had been in and out of different uh, physical therapies. I've had uh, two knee surgeries on both of my knees, just clean outs. I've had my ankle cut on twice and they were starting to threaten for back surgery as well, especially if I was going to keep being a firefighter. And so I just thought about it. I thought that just doesn't sound like something I should do. And so also recognizing the fact that it at this point in my career and, and with this injury, I was a danger not even just to myself for future injuries, I was a danger to my coworkers who I swore to protect and help. I was a danger to the citizens I swore to protect as well as to my family. Um, And so it really got kind of weighty on me. And one of the things that all the surgeons, all the doctors, all the physical therapists, all the chiropractors kept saying was I can fix you for now, but, Mm -hmm. and I got really sick of hearing that. And I I was like, I really got to take my health in a better situation than this. And so uh, one night I could not sleep and uh, just plugged in the headphones, started listening to praise and worship music. Uh, thank God for the headphones because it reminded me to stay quiet because it was three in the morning in my house with two little children and a sleepy wife. And uh, I uh, got on my knees in one of the hardest parts of the house and started praying. And I just said, God, I don't know what to do. And I didn't quite hear anything. And I wasn't, I'm not the most patient or still person on planet earth. And so I just said, you know what, God, either I'm going to go do this or you're going to show me. And I went to stand up and with still being hurt with my back, my left knee gave out, which is my bad knee (laughs) of the two. And so I went (laughs) hardcore, which is what I need. I can be very, very stubborn. And uh, I, I took a hard hit, hard hit to the floor on my knees and of course hurt my back and uh, right then and there. He gave me a message that tomorrow, being in a few hours uh, um, with the phys- a new physical therapist, that if I hear, I can fix you for now, but you're done. I mean, I was loud and clear. And so sure enough, the next afternoon, I went to the physical therapist. Uh, I actually, when I was sharing my story with her and telling her everything, I was listing off the exercises before she could. And yeah. she said, well, she goes, obviously... And in my own words, as a joke, you're a lifer to this. And I said, I can't keep doing that. She goes, well, I can fix you for now, but. Oh, yes. Which also happened to be what was supposed to be my regular shift day, which I was still off injured for. And so I went home and I looked at my wife and I said, "Uh, can we do this? This being the company that I'm going to talk about here in in a minute. Mm -hmm. And she said, yes, we can. You can't even tie your own shoes. And I couldn't, I legitimately either. And this happened in February slash March in Kansas, which is where I live. And it can get rather cold here. And so I was either wearing flip-flops everywhere, or I had to have her or my oldest son uh, tie my shoes for me. And uh, I know there are people who have it way worse than I do, but I also was facing the possibility of making it worse if I didn't make a different decision. And so Mm -hmm. I, uh, I called my uncle who helped me get on the job and told him and he in a loving way, laughed and said, I've seen you try and get out of a chair, Chris. I understand. And I, I, from the heart, was more worried about disappointing him because he was my hero. Um, Now, multiple levels. One is just a loving uncle who's always helped me out. I've had a lot of family help over the years. But uh, also, he was the firefighter, you know, uh, growing up. And I got to go to the station when my aunt would watch me and, and see what he did and see the trucks. And as a little kid and, and hear what he did. And then of course, as I got older, learning more, and then he helped me get on and he said, Chris, he goes, your time is done. It's okay. Call your chief, let him know. So I did that and left. And, uh, prior to all that, my wife and I were putting together our company, which is Eagle Fire Enrichment. We are a leadership solutions company. I focus mainly on, uh, communication, making it effective, as well as the training and development of not just the leaders themselves, but of those within the organization, and a focus on safety and crisis management, which all stems together from my experience as a firefighter 
And I've been in leadership one way or another for the past 20 years. And so God has really put that on my heart to be able to do. And so apparently my plan to do it part-time on my days off as a firefighter was not God's plan. And here I am doing it full-time. And and the second part of, of Eagle Fire Enrichment is inspirational speaking. And it's sharing these stories and sharing what God has done and, and bringing people together to, to just just have a unified smile, make us stronger, make us better, and uh, for a better life and a better community. So that's that's really the much longer bio than than I originally uh, planned on saying. So yeah, I it's it's you. it's a blessing to say the least. I've been through what I've been through, but what has happened hasn't happened to me. It's happened for me, so I can mm-hmm. be the servant leader that God has called me to be. Beautiful. That anointing is on you. It's a cloak. It's a cloak that God has placed placed on you. And now the, the, the 20 years that you were in the fire department, I remember in our virtual coffee, you mentioned technical leadership, if I remember correctly. What is technical leadership? What is technical, lead- technical leadership goes back to just those finer points of the communication, the training and development, the safety and crisis prevention and management. Okay. Um, it's the stuff that people, honestly, they try to overcomplicate it. Um, you know, it's, it becomes more about that rank title and position, but how do you treat that rank title and position? Are you the person that goes around and says, look at me, or, uh, Ooh. you know, I, I'm, I'm this and I'm that, eh, hold on. Cause first of all, you're probably going to get put in your place. Um, and secondly, if, if that's what you're about, you're going to suffer. And so we work more to the, you know, here's, here's what I, I want to get across. Here's what I want done. Okay. So how do we tell everybody else this? And how do we break that down to where they understand it, but also, and this is a real technical aspect of leadership that gets missed all the time. Leaders always want to provide feedback. You know what a lot of them don't want to receive? Feedback. Because a lot of times we want to be right. We always want to be right. We always want to be right. And in the areas where, where, and I'm not saying every leader does that. I mean, I think anybody and everybody can be slightly petrified of feedback, but it's good and it's healthy. And so when we're looking at technical aspects, we have to have this back and forth conversation, not just with ourselves, but with those that we're serving so that the mission gets completed. This is where we, we really, we really look at, um, the technical aspect of how are you communicating with people? I mean, one, do you, do you have um, uh, empathy in your voice yeah. and what you're doing and saying? Do, do you have an understanding? And, and one of the things I tell people is leaders are listeners. Mm, absolutely. You know, and when, you lis- when you listen to respond, you're not actually listening. When you're listening you know, to understand, you're listening. Yeah. And so when we're doing that, we're taking that feedback and we're translating it to how can we be better? Mm-hmm. You know, um, I, I've seen a lot of, uh, a lot of times in, in different fields and in different missions where a leader will go, okay, this is what I saw. This is what I told him to do. And it's not getting done. Why? Yeah. Well, it's because it's what you were thinking. It's not what any of them were thinking. And many times where that happens is a lack of training for that leader. There's a lot of times people get promoted and they get into that position and the Mm -hmm. stack of papers gets put on the desk. They say, what's this? And the person above them were literally that person just sitting at the desk. They just got promoted to the next spot and they did what the person did before them and the person before them where it was just, well, I don't know. I just figured it out. So figure it out. And now nothing's getting done and you got someone sitting there going, I don't know what to do. And so then they look at these papers and they say, well, we got to get this, this, and this done. So they type up something real quick or they go, hey, you guys got to do this. And everyone's standing there going, yeah, we have to do that. It's our job. But how are you wanting us to get it done? When are you wanting us to get it done? Why do you want us to get it done? And when we can tie that purpose together to the mission, yeah, those technical aspects actually get a lot easier. When we try to overcomplicate things by saying, I got to have X, Y, and Z. Then just start with X, then get to Y, then get to Z. And so it's, it's, it's a matter of breaking down the simplicity of leadership. What are you? You're a servant. You're there to serve. How are you going to serve? Well, you're going to effectively communicate with your people and express to them and explain to them what needs to get done and why we're doing it. People want to know why. Like I said, people are hungry. People are hungry. They want to know why. Why are we doing this? Well, we're here to make money. Well, okay, congratulations. That's not what I was asking. Why are we doing this? 
And how are we supposed to do it? Because there's also a lot of times from a technical aspect where people will get something done and the leader comes in, well, that's not what I wanted, or that's not how I wanted it done, right? That's not how I would have done it. Well, did the job get done? Did the job get done? Yes. Was it effective? No. Okay. So how do we make it more effective? Well, I would have done it this and this way. Why did you tell them that to begin with? Yeah. Well, you know, I just, um, you know, when I was out there, I was just told get it done. And then I found this way to get it done and everybody was happy. And now I got promoted. So teach them how you did it. Yeah. Keep it. And so my greater point to that is one of my captains, I share this uh, quite often. One of my captains one time, I uh, just kind of one of those office cluster kind of days and uh, just pieces and uh, of the puzzle weren't fitting together the way they needed it to. And I was in chaos mode. And uh, this is in the office. This isn't even at an emergency. And he just looked at me. He goes, Chris, stop. What? No, okay, Cap, we got it. He goes, stop. We were a headquarters house. So headquarters house, sorry, I backtracked this for a second. Headquarters house is the one that may have to move people around. Say someone calls in sick or there's vacation and you need a driver to go somewhere. Well, now you got to call another station, say, hey, I need this person to go here so they can drive. And then I need this person to go fill that spot, things like that. And it just wasn't quite working out. He goes, just stop. Uh, Fine. He goes, kiss it. What? He goes, kiss it. So I'm not kissing the computer. (laughs) He looks at me, he goes, first of all, don't be dumb. He goes, secondly, keep it simple, stupid. He goes, kiss it. Who do you need to move where? I said, really? I need three moves. He goes, that's all you need, but yet you just tried making six. Why are you trying to make six? I don't know. He goes, because you forgot to kiss it. He goes, you were overcomplicating your leadership. He goes, just make three phone calls and get it over with. And I was like, oh my gosh. And I did, I realized I was overcomplicating the whole situation. And that's the thing from a technical aspect as leaders, we do. We try to overcomplicate things sometimes because of ego. I'll be honest, ego's mm-hmm. gotten in the way for me where I overcome it. Like, why are we doing that? Well, because because I said, you know, I think if we do this, I think we do that. And my idea is I stop and ask the other ideas around you. There could be a better solution. And if there's not, fine. But at least you opened up that avenue to have that conversation. And you've you've opened up and expressed the fact that you value, you're taking value, you're investing in your employees or your crewmates, your team members. Those you serve. Beautiful. And when they see that, the customer is going to see that. Same thing at home. When you value and you, and you invest in your children, you invest in your relationships, your spouse, your significant other, you value and invest in them. When you do that with your neighbors and, and someone calls on you, they know who can do what, who can be trusted when and with mm-hmm. what. Yeah, And I, I tell leaders that all the time. It's like, do you want to know who you can trust? Start asking. Who's good at this and who's good at that? Expose the weaknesses, not mm-hmm. to ridicule, but to take those out of the way. So that way you can find people's strengths that overshadow the weaknesses. Mm-hmm. If there's something that I'm not the strongest at, I'll be honest with you. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. I'm going to find someone who is. I'm going to find someone who is. And I'm going to let mm-hmm. them have it. So I can go do what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah, yeah. So. Wow. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I love that answer. Definitely true. Um, I agree with everything that, that you've said. And we should always be in the search, always find that answer. And I love the fact that you mentioned that there's always more, more, more than one solution to every problem. More always. than one solution. Always. always. Yeah. Oh, and, and be open about it. Ask for yeah. help. I said that earlier. I don't care if it's technical leadership, if it's a crisis, if it's something you're personally dealing with or going through, if you're having negative thoughts, if, uh, you know, um, or, or you're going through something, man, ask yeah. for help. Speak up, communicate, connect. Always. That's the, that's the key. Communicate and connect. Now, uh, you, you're someone that always helps people. You know, it resonates with the roles that you fulfilled. It's it's roles that that uplift, that help. Um, in, and it's your it's in your conduct to others. And I, I noticed that you have this knack of connecting people because you want to empower them. You know, um, I want to I want to ask you to share your life philosophy on connecting because I see 
I see uh, the bigger arena and then I see the smaller things happening and how you connect the dots for people, how you put people, uh, you know, in, in, in uh, areas where they can grow. So tell me more about that uh, because that's a very important part of what you are doing. Well, first of all, thank you. I received that and I appreciate you, you noticing that, that, uh, um, that's something that I just, I've kind of always done. And, and a lot of that stems from and starts with listening. Mm-hmm. Um, something I was not as a pessimist, very good at, I was horrible at it. Um, but one of the things I had to realize in my life, and, it, and it, it's a part of, it is a part of the great commission and Christ said, go therefore and make disciples. Mm-hmm. And how do we do that? Well, we connect people. And yeah. when I see somebody doing, um, yeah, ironically enough, I just talked about this today uh, with some other people on another show uh, that I host, um, that uh, we oh, yeah. were talking about mission statements. And oh. um, and a lot of people, oh, wow, let's unpack this for a quick second here. One, if you go into an organization, you ask people, do you have a mission statement? They'll say yes. The better question is, do you know the mission statement? Oh, Sometimes yes. the people who wrote them don't know their own mission statement. Now let's take it a step further into the personal leadership. Do you have your own mission statement? Does your family have a mission statement? Mm-hmm. Does your neighborhood have a mission statement? I wouldn't say we formalized one where I live, but at the same time, we all know we're going to look after one another. But the thing is, is with my mission of wanting to help people, and that's a very general, broad category of my mission statement. But with that mission comes the responsibility of of knowing that if I'm going to help people, I take responsibility knowing that I don't have all those strengths. Going mm-hmm. back to talking about strengths and weaknesses and technical leadership, it's the same thing mm-hmm. with, with what I do and why I connect people. Because there are things, you know, um, medically I can't do for people, you know, um, holistic healing. I don't have that gift. So I'm going to connect you with the people who do, but I listen to what they've got going on. Um, you know, listening to your story and, and hearing you, Juanita, I, you know, I ask like, written a book yet no let me connect you with someone yeah simple as that um you know not to pick on Juanita uh there uh but it it is but I also have to look at the fact that again I wouldn't be where I'm at if other people hadn't done that for me so if other people have done that for me God's done that for me why don't I do that and so what I do though is I line with people that are a part of my mission their statement may be different from mine but the overall practice is we're here to help. We're here to help others. You know, and I'm not saying that, you know, working at a, a, a car factory, for instance, isn't helping people. It is. But my mission is not to build cars. Okay? Yes. So let's find, let's find a factory. If that's where you want to work and what you want to do, I'll, I'll help you find that place. I don't have a direct connection with that. But if it's from a health standpoint or it's a coaching standpoint, it's a business standpoint, it's a, hey, write your book or, hey, I want to speak better or I want to be on certain stages. Or if it's people that have aligned themselves with the way I do things, the way I see things, and I know Christ is bringing us together, I can't help but share it. Um, you know, I've even had people say, you know, hey, I, I think, uh, you know, you've given me more business than I've given back to you. Well, it's better to give than receive. So I don't do it for that. I do it for the impact. Income, money will come and go. It really will. And I know we're in a, again, we're in a time of life where money is penny pension in a lot of cases. I don't care where you're at in the ladder financially. Everybody's keeping an eye on things. But the thing is, is from, a, I look at life and I'm taking this from a, a man by the name of Joel Marion from one of his podcasts where they were, um, he owned a supplement company and his guest owned a supplement company. And Joel said, Hey, Steve, um, Steve Weatherford, he said, uh, tell us about your supplement company. And part of the conversation stemmed into that people were always surprised that he would allow them to speak about their companies, especially if they were in competition with him. He goes, well, mm-hmm. we may be competitors, but we're better as cooperators than we are as competitors. Sure. So when I find people who, who, who have that cooperation, Again, it's not just a financial say. It's not a, hey, I sent five people your way. You better send five people my way. Because I grew up in that in, in some of my early sales days. Mm-hmm. Oh, hey, if you do this for him, he'll do this for you. Well, wait a minute mm-hmm. for a second. I'm not worried about that. Equality. Well, but you just gave him this, this, and this. You should be asking for that back. It'll, it'll work itself out. I guarantee it. Yeah. God has greater for us because it's better to give than receive. And so that's the big deal is, is I want people I can do cooperation with. 
not competition. Competition's fun. I love competition. I'm a sports person, but uh, I leave it at that. Um, so, so being able to connect those dots and just seeing like, the big thing that that I look for and I listen for is where do you need help? Where do you truly need the help? Where do you need the guidance? And if it's something that I can do, let's do it. Here's what I do. Here's how I can do it. Here's the goals we're going to set. This is what it's going to cost, things like that. We'll do it. If it's something that's not my scope of practice, but I know who to connect you with, I would be a liar, a hypocrite, and in my opinion, a thief. If I didn't send you that way and I try to say, yeah, just buy this program and I'll walk you right through it. Don't worry about it. I can't do that. I, I, I was raised differently than that. Um, and so it's a, it, it really is. It's about how can we change our lives for the better? And who's the best person to get you there? If it's not me, I'm going to be 100% honest with you. I'm going to tell you that. And I'm going to help you find that person. If I already know them, boom, we're done. If not, I'll help you look for them. Absolutely, absolutely, and that that's a really a skill that you have. You have a knack for that. So, so thank you for sharing that with the world. Now, mm-hmm. you're an entrepreneur at heart, and uh, how does entrepreneurship, um, you know, fit into your life? Uh, what avenues are you pursuing at the moment? I know there's a lot going on. Uh, are there any new things going on? Uh, with you Uh, and I want to ask are people born entrepreneurs or do they become entrepreneurs and there's no answer there's no right or wrong for that uh, answer for that question I'm still deciding that I don't know the answer to that question so I would love to hear your view on that so I will answer this more from a leadership standpoint because the question I like to ask is are leaders born or are they raised and, you know, I really get a 50-50 answer on that. And then I come in with the counter that it's both. Mm. It's both. So to answer your question as an entrepreneur, um, ironically enough, I uh, people ask me, how long have you been coaching? And I always tell people, I've been in leadership for 20 years. I was a fireman for 14. I was in sales. I was yeah. in management. Uh, you know, I don't count Boy Scouts a part of that 20 years, but... I had a, we had a large troop and I was the boy leader for them. And I was the middle age. I wasn't the oldest, but I also wasn't the youngest. So pleasing both sides of that as a 14 year old, not an easy task. And and I wasn't the only one, but I also had great leaders around me to help facilitate that. But I think it's, it's, it is a, a born into thing. I think there are, you even said it yourself, some things that you were, um, that you graciously gave to me uh, that that you say you're born to do this. and But it's the recognition of it mm-hmm. and the training of it that actually allows it to expand. It's the same thing entrepreneurial. And so I've only had a business card for three and a half years, which is the mm-hmm. amount of time I've been retired from the fire department. Uh, prior to that, I'd never even, to my recollection, learned the term entrepreneur. It was actually the gentleman that told me what coaching was. I was uh, working on a master's degree and uh, he, I was needing my internship so I could finish it. And yeah. I wanted to get into consulting and I knew I wanted to do leadership. That was the whole reason why I went to the program I did. And we met because I said, Hey, I need an internship. Here's what I need, blah, blah, blah. And he said, I don't do that, but I think you and I need to meet anyways. Mm-hmm. So we sat down and we talked and, and one, I, I'm forever grateful for that conversation and that day of coffee yeah. that we had. And when I started asking about business and setting up this same thing, he goes, well, I'm an entrepreneur. I'll be honest. I went home and Googled the term because I had no idea. I had no idea. And so for me, I would say, sure, I was born to be an entrepreneur, but I've definitely had to learn it too. I definitely had to uh, learn what it means to do sales and marketing and to sell myself. I've sold other things, but I've never really sold myself. Mm-hmm. And ultimately, that's what people are buying, whether you have a product or not, they're buying you. Um, You look at some of the most successful companies in sales, especially direct sales um, or networking sales, uh, they they buy into the person. They buy into the person that's excited about the product and the things that they're doing and things they talk about. But I've had to really train on that. I've had to work very hard to make myself better at it. I've had to make myself a better speaker. I've had people tell me, well, you're born to speak because you talk a lot. It's good. Last person laughing, I get paid to do that now. So um, be, make fun of me as much as you want for being a talker. Uh, but 
I've still had to train myself in it. I've always been a storyteller. I love to, I love telling stories as a kid. And I, okay, sure. If you want to play the whole, yeah, he was seven. He loved to tell stories. I did. My, my middle son loves doing it. And there are times it's hard not to be like, okay, we're going to dial that down. It's time to be quiet versus also allowing it, the creativity to happen because he's a great storyteller. I mean, I really do see speaking in his future. And I'm not just saying that like, oh, the kid can throw a football. He's going in the NFL, right? Um, or he yeah. can kick a soccer ball really well. So he's going to play in the World Cup, stuff like that. Yeah. As much as it is, that's where I come from. I've had to train on it. Mm-hmm. I've had to learn when to pause. I've had to learn how to add in the, this is what I do. I mean, my some of my first speeches that had to do with my company, yeah. I had people come tell me like, man, you drew us in. The content was great and everything else. How do we contact you? Mm. I, didn't, I didn't close it. I didn't do a call to action. Hey, if you want to learn more, you can email me or whatever. I had to learn that. So I really think it's, it's, it's a balance of both. Um, you know, I always say that everyone can be a leader. Doesn't mm-hmm. mean everybody should be. Doesn't mm. mean everybody should be. And yeah. because there are those that they, they aren't willing to learn. They aren't willing to train. They just want to be given things and then say, oh, look at me. And it's like, well, what did you do? Show me. Yeah. And yes. so I think that's a huge part of that entrepreneurial spirit. I do do a lot. I am working on my first of, of well, my life story book, and then I'll be doing some leadership series books. Um, yes. I've also gotten involved in some other marketing things uh, that are being done over here in the States as well as globally um, that, um, that are really getting ready to take off. I'm also a uh, part of uh, some networking groups and, uh, but all of that just stems from that connection that you were asking me about earlier about just aligning. It's just become an alignment for me of what God wants me to do and where he wants me and being able to expose that and express that is helping me help more people. So mm-hmm. that's, that's really the, that's kind of the long and short, uh, I think answer to that. So. Mm-hmm. Beautiful, beautiful. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. I agree with you. I agree with you completely. And you, you've clarified a few things in that for me because I always, I always, when I get to that question, I'm never sure, you know, what, what standpoint I'm taking. But I love the way that you, that you brought it across. It's making me think um, about that specific topic because that's a very important question to ask, you know, especially when we do training and when we work with people, are they are leaders born or are they formed so, or entrepreneurs? I said the other day, I said, uh, in a, I was doing the keynote speaker. I was the keynote speaker at the CLA meeting and I was speaking about how to recognize what's real and what's fake. And I, when I started out, and that was a whole other topic, but when I started out, I said, there's a difference between a business owner and an entrepreneur. And people don't always see it that way, but business owners, you know, they work day to day, how to bring in that income and entrepreneurs kind of look to the future. How can I make money in? Because we live in a world and there's a system and we have to, you know, live according to that system and that involves the tool of money. So uh, I love always unpacking things. And there were a lot of them in there that didn't realize that there's actually a difference. I mean, we are both. But not everybody is both, and that's fine. Some people are just entrepreneurs and others are bus- just business owners. Sometimes they're both. So thank you for, for bringing that, uh, you know, into my mind. I'm going to chew on that, and it's shaping me, and it's teaching me, and I love to learn from you. And, and our virtual, a virtual coffee, it I- included a discussion on health, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, I, I wrote the piece here, you know, your holistic approach, uh, in healing, it's a, it's refreshing. And I would love for you to share the details. There's an organization that you utilize, you use their services to facilitate that. And I really think, you know, it's so important because especially after COVID, one thing that COVID made very, very clear is that it didn't matter who the person was, where they lived, what their the title was, how much money they had, if they were a believer or not a believer, it really didn't matter. We were all in the same boat as humanity. COVID hit the globe. And health is so important now. The health and the wellness industry will never go out of style. It will always be something, but even more so now. And I believe that we have to bring, I heard your testimony and the positive transformation that uh, you know the company brought to you. Let's uh, mention them and what they do so that we can make it available to someone in the audience that might have uh, health issues that might want to go there. 
because good health is very important. Yeah, you know, it is. And so the um, Dr. Kyson, K-I-S-O-N, Frank, created the Docere, D-O-C-E-R-E, Life Center. And then you can go docerelifecenter.com. And, and Dr. Kyson's uh, one of five doctors there, but he's the one who created it. And him and I, uh, when I was still in the fire department, one of my firefighters knew I was having some back issues. And he said, hey, this guy does things different. Go see him. Because I'd gone to chiropractors and it worked. Don't get me wrong. I'm not knocking them, but it no. was the, I can fix you for now, but attitude still. And so uh, Dr. Frank was doing things a little bit different and it was definitely holistic and it was weird. I'll admit mm-hmm. it was weird, but it worked. And then, yeah. uh, and then on his journey, he, uh, he went out of private practice for a little while. And then that happened to be the time when I got hurt. And so then ironically enough, and this is, I think this is just, actually, I don't think, I know this was God's timing in my personal health journey, because as a firefighter, uh, I believe in physical fitness, eating decently healthy. Uh, firefighters love ice cream. So I'll say, I'm not going to say perfectly healthy all the time because I ate a lot of ice no, cream. No, um, no. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> ice cream's good. Uh, but uh you know, and, and I've had my, I've had my bouts with alcohol and tobacco and things like that and uh, stress, yeah. you know, mental, emotional, all the things that can make us unhealthy. And so, uh, and that definitely played a huge part of it. So where I say, I know God came into this. It wasn't until after, cause I kept thinking, mm. man, I need to get a hold of him, but I didn't have a way of getting a hold of him. I had no idea. Uh, cause we had had a distance gap because God had called mm. him to do some other things. Well, ironically enough, it was after I officially, not when I said I was going to leave the job, but when I actually signed the paperwork and it was official, I could not turn back and say, oh, I changed my mind. Just kidding. I'm back. I couldn't do that. I would have to redo the whole process, hiring, all that stuff. Anyways, um, that I got a message from him and said, hey, I'm back. I'm coming back to private practice and you're not going to believe what I'm doing. Come see me. Like, uh, you're not going to believe what I'm doing because I just quit my job. And uh, he goes, wait, what? I was like, dude, I can't tie my own <laughs> shoes, you know? And I just kind of, I just like word vomited it on him in this email. And so uh, I went to the office, his new office, and uh, he had all these oils and these remedies and lasers. And, and, and I'm, I can't, one, I can't really say it all just because I'm not certified and I don't know it that well. I know it works. I will say that. Um, but he was doing frequency testing. I can say that. And it, and, mm-hmm. and just, and it's kinesiology. Um, and yeah. so when he started doing that, he started going, Chris, he goes, got some things going on up here in your head. Train yeah. your brain. And yeah. I was like, no, dude, well, it's my back. He goes, no, it's in your head. I was oh like, my what? Goodness. So he started to, he started to uh, develop into that. We started to clear that out. And all of a sudden it was like, oh, I can do things again. And of course he did some adjustments and some other things from a holistic standpoint that all of a sudden I, he goes, okay, he goes, tie your shoes. So I did, I tied my shoes. I couldn't believe it. First time in six ish months. I can't remember the exact time. Like I could tie my shoes again. And so then we kept working and talking and, and, and uh, he's asking me, you know, what are you going to do? And I was like, well, I'm looking at getting into the mind of the leader and into the heart of the leader and things like that. So we started combining our forces of what we could do to help people, how we could connect with one another. And so when he created the Docere Life Center, he added Eagle Fire Enrichment, which is my company, uh, to the building. And, um, and he's just developed and expanded from there. And so ultimately what I tell people is I owe him a debt of gratitude that he – Help me tie my shoes again. Wow. That's something I took for granted prior. Nice. It's just tying your shoes. Just tie, you know, after you're a certain age, you just know how to tie your shoes, right? For those that, you know, uh, who, yeah. who, who have that or do that. I know not everybody, you know, has all the blessings in that, but it was something that I did have. And when I lost it, it was something I took for granted. And so, you know, and it was more than that though. It was things going on in my brain. So we had to, we had to, he created some of these remedies and things that that would help to facilitate a healthier mindset. And then it actually ended up boiling down to my kidneys. And it took us a while to get there because I had so many things packed down, you know, because the stomach is the second brain. And so, you know, yeah, so your stomach has this process. Well, I wasn't able to process these things because my body wasn't functioning right. And it was all manifesting in my back. My goodness. And so now, yeah, so he's done all this for me. So has Dr. Craig Farney, who's there. Uh, He's really been helping me unpack 
a lot of the mental and emotional and psychological stress that I've been through in my life between the two of them so much has opened up for me. And now we have five doctors there is continuing to grow. So I yes. highly encourage everybody go check out the Docere, D-O-C-E-R-E, which means to teach. So the Docere Life Center to teach yeah. life, a life of abundance, a life of happiness, a life of joy, a life of functionality. Um, and we have, there's so much more there that, um, and for any of you saying, well, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I don't, I'm not where you are, Chris, you don't have to do that. You can actually schedule an appointment. They can do it through zoom. Of course, if you do happen to be in Kansas, you could come see them. Um, but you can yeah. schedule a 20 minute consult with them for free. Um, I don't get anything as a bonus for saying this. Other than the fact that like Juanita brought up earlier about me connecting people is I get to connect people. Yeah. That's so, your food. You know, if yeah. you if you if you are just feeling just totally unwired and unbalanced like I did, and again, yeah. it's not technical medical terms, anything like that. It's not what they say. I, I'm Chris's experience. Um, give them yeah. a shout. You know, if there's technical <laughs> leadership things, holler at me. But uh, but yeah, yeah. no, it, it just is, and and we've created a partnership and a brotherhood in this of just helping people helping people help themselves, helping people discover themselves. Uh, they can also help with balancing and relationships, uh, mm -hmm. detoxification, things like that. So, um, you know, uh, they do a foot bath detox here. Uh, if you're able to be here for it, it's really kind of gross for me because I turn the water all kinds of colors. It's really bad. But, um, but yeah, you'll see uh, different things on their website. That's so cool that they can do or they can point you in the right direction, but you just got to reach out to them and, and just, and just see. So, but yeah, they've done a lot of things that have helped me just unpack just all these things I shared with you today. I mean, this is, this is really a good way to, to come to come to a point in my story now of where I'm at, because my mind is clearer than it's ever been. My heart is clearer than it's ever been. Um, my body uh, from a, a movement standpoint functions so much better. And now it's like, if I have something going wrong, I'm like, okay, either a, there was something that was toxic to me, like food or something, but, or B, I got something yeah. toxic going on up here mm -hmm. that's messing something up that's keeping me from functioning at my best. So they really helped me to function fully at my best, physically, emotionally, spiritually, um, psychologically. Um, and it just, you know, for, yeah. from my own personal standpoint, I know they can do that uh, for everybody out there. So um, if that's something yeah, you're looking to do and, and Juanita, we can get, I'll get you the links for the show notes and things like that. But yeah, they, they really opened that up for me and it's just, it's been so, and they've done it for my whole family and my kids, uh, you know, all the things they do. My wife, she, uh, these medals are not mine. Those are my wife. She's a marathoner, an ultra marathoner. Uh, she likes to run. I don't, uh, <laughs> no, I don't like to run. I'd rather go back to getting hit in the face doing MMA than, than, than to run. But hey, everybody's got their thing. We all got our little bit of crazy when it comes to the extreme things we like to do. So, um, but, uh, no, and I'm very proud of her for that, but they've also helped her recover from her runs faster, uh, made her more effective yeah, as a wow. runner so there's there's a lot of a lot of claims there uh but the, again that's personal experience i'm not specifically mm -hmm. putting that on them no. because everybody has their own individual thing and that's just what i encourage you to express and explore just reach out to them so yeah been beautiful good. i love that yeah, yeah. You know, i was criticized uh quite often in the ministry because everybody believed that you have to go to a normal gp and it's been my experience and i i've got nothing against gps but it's been my experience, in my experience, they always just give you antibiotics and they send you off. And that's not good for your body. So I started going to a homeopath. And people uh, criticized me because they said it's not biblical and, you know, you should use the chemical stuff and why are we herbal and this all weird things around it. And I just said, listen, uh, where do you think all the medicine comes from originally? It comes from herbs and I like to take my children there often because I, I believe we should maintain good health. And I also went, uh, I'm not sure if it's similar to your machine. Uh, it's called Skio, but it also works in, a, in almost the same fashion where they work with frequencies and, you know, they look at your body. And so I, I believe in these things. And that's why when you mentioned that and the, you sent the link, I'm going to actually book my own session. So to the audience, what I want to say is, Book your session. You know, look after your health. Here we have a testimony. It works. It's not only for Chris. He, he takes his family. It's safe. It's for your children as well. So don't wait for something to go wrong with your health. Maintain your health. 
Um, now, we talked about your niece, you know, and uh, there might be someone in the audience that have gone through something similar. I mean, you got hurt, then you got hurt again. You're back in your knees. How, how can you encourage someone that has gone through something uh, quite similar if they are facing that at the moment? Oh, uh, you know, uh, one, don't be stubborn like I am. Uh, so when I needed, so I was 28 when I had the first set of knee surgeries, I had only been on the fire department. I got on in, I was 23. So five years. Um, sorry, I'm not the best at math, even if it was just a simple five, no. that was bad. Yeah. Uh, wow. It was bad. <laughs> Anyways, sorry. <laughs> Comedic moment for everybody. You can laugh at me. It's okay. I promise. Um, no, so five, only five years into the fire department. Um, and uh, I had to have my first set of knee cleanouts. And the doctor asked me, he goes, what all do you do? I said, well, I'm a fireman. He goes, oh, okay. He goes, what else do you do? You know, I guess, well, I, I play a lot of basketball. He goes, oh, he goes, what else do you do? I do MMA. He goes, you're literally yes. doing everything wrong. <laughs> he goes, you're doing everything wrong. He goes, you need to quit at least one of them. And I said, no. He goes, Chris. You're going to need multiple surgeries. He goes, you keep going the way you are. He goes, this is my official diagnosis. You have the knees yeah. of a 50 year old and you're not even 30 yet. And, and I tell people who are older than me that and they're like, oh yeah, right. And I'm like, no, it wasn't just him. The physical therapist said it. My regular physician said it. The surgeon said it, all this and that. And uh, I, he goes, well, he goes, I'll fix it for now, but you're going to be back. And I was, I was actually back three years later. He called it. He had, no, I'm sorry. He said three years. I made it four because I'm stubborn. Um, yeah. but I was still, I was still trying to fight. I was still, uh, I did back off of the basketball cause it was hurting other areas of my legs. Mm -hmm. Um, of course I was still fighting fire, but I could still effectively do it. I could still do my job. And that, that was always my guide. Can I still do the job? Can I still do it safely? Can I still do it effectively? And does it yeah. potentially hurt anybody else? And so my encouragement is, is, is look at the lens of what are you doing and is it worth it? Mm -hmm. And not just worth it for you. If you look at it and say, well, but but I, I, I love, I love MMA. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. Are you going to be able to carry your grandkids in 20 years? Because that's what they were threatening with. You're not. Yeah. You may be carrying your kids now. And then of course my two-year-old, I couldn't pick her up. My two-year-old baby girl. I couldn't yeah. pick her up. Yeah. Couldn't pick my baby girl up. I dropped, I actually dropped her to be honest. Now I was about this far off the floor. Thank the Lord. But I dropped yeah. her. My wife immediately, what's wrong? So, so what you really got to do is you got to take that inner look in your heart and say, is it worth it? Yes. Is what I'm doing worth it? If you're sitting here saying, well, I need it for the paycheck or I need it to provide for my family. Well, are you going to be able to provide for your family in 10 years if you keep doing what you're doing? Mm -hmm. You got to look at that. But then also don't just give up either. Yeah. You know, is there something else you like Docera Life Center? Can you go to, can you get a hold of Docera Life Center? There are times the physical manifestations are because of yes. other things that were going on with me. Yep. So maybe there is something else that's going on. Maybe it is a simple surgery. Again, this all comes back to asking for help. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe you do go talk to a surgeon. Um, you know, as of when I was leaving the job, I did go talk to the knee surgeon. He said that I'd already had too many surgeries, vol voluntary surgeries. He didn't say I didn't need them. He just said that. I, he couldn't tie it to an injury. So insurance wouldn't cover it anymore. Mm -hmm. Kind of a big deal. Couldn't afford it cash wise. And he said, you need a third set of surgeries. And I kept saying that. Some of the things that Docera has done for me is actually, I'm saying prolonging it. The yeah. need for it. I don't need it like I did two years ago, three years ago, since we've been doing the things we're doing. So there's a lot of also help and opportunity out there that can help you overcome the things you're doing. Maybe you need to exercise in a different way. Maybe you need to change your eating. A lot of the things I was eating was toxic to me. Even though I loved them, it was toxic to me, like ice cream. Yeah. I love ice cream. We come to find out there's only one type of ice cream I eat and it has to come from a certain cow. Luckily enough, we have a lot of supply of that where I live. But I also had to back off for other health reasons because I like to work out. I like you know to be in shape. Um, uh, for my own self. So, anyways, it's just, it is. It's a matter of that that interpersonal communication to yourself. You know, what are you telling your brain? What's your brain telling you? You know, is it saying, you know, I'll just keep pushing on from an ego standpoint, or is it is it really worth it to keep going, or is there a way to fix it? And having a surgery, if you can afford it or have it done, it's not the best for you, but it's also not the end of the world. 
it prolonged what I was doing. It helped me out. If I could have gotten the third set, I'd probably still be on the job, quite honestly. But you got to really take that deep look inside, but also just recognize that the end is not the end. I'm not done until I'm six feet underground. Actually, I'm going to be cremated. So I'm not done until I spread my ashes. I'm not done. I may not be kicking like I used to. I may not be fighting fire like I used to. Those are actual pictures of me in the background there doing my job, doing what I loved doing, helping people. It just looks different now and be willing to accept that, which is hard. Mm -hmm. Don't wrap your identity up in the things you're doing. Wrap it up in who Christ says you are. Mm -hmm. And those other things, pray into it, pray into it. You know, God has healed me in some major miraculous ways because I really did. I'd given up. I was like, no, nope, not going to work. Kaisen comes into my life, says, well, let's try something different. We tried mm -hmm. something different. God said, well, this will work. So just be willing to be open to options and, and take a look at things. Take a look at yourself, though. That's the big part of it. Absolutely true. I, I can't even add to that because the way that you explained it is so, you know, thorough. It's so meticulous. Now, you mentioned martial arts and, um, you know, MMA, that you have that love for that. Um, how did your love for that develop? um because i mean once you do mma you'll always love it i know that for sure i, I want to add something that that you've mentioned being punched in the face um i'm always calm and collected you know when i start fighting and i kind of see the pace of my opponent and i try and see what are they going to do next but you know if someone punches me in the face it's like a whole other person <laughs> comes out. I do not like that. It makes me so it's something I don't know, maybe subconscious, but I get so so angry then and then the fight is on. So how did your um love for martial arts develop? I you know, actually I want to start this off with a Mike Tyson quote. Everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face, right? <laughs> and that's life, but that's what I love about martial arts. So I look back on on martial arts. I had an uncle who was in karate and his best friend is the one that got him involved in it. Uh they were in karate. I, I don't know which discipline specifically, but I remember my uncle would show me a couple different things here and there just to try to be interested. And then I was supposed to sign up, but kind of going back to the childhood of yeah. I wasn't allowed to do things. Uh, and that was one of them. I wasn't going to be allowed to do it, even though I, I loved it. And a lot of that stems from I'm a child of the 80s. I grew up on all the Jean-Claude Van Damme movies, the Bruce Lee movies. Oh, I I mean, those, those. those were before me, but I did. I grew up on all those movies, you know, all the different fighting with Chuck Norris. Can't, I can't yeah. talk about yeah. martial arts. I'll talk about Chuck Norris, right? And so I'd always wanted to do it. And then, um, you know, kind of just really gave up on the idea. And then of course, UFC came out, we had MMA and uh, cage fighting and all this and that. And I started to fall in love with it. And I was starting to learn it from watching it. And I was, I was the TV fan of it. Yeah. Um, oh. And then as part of being a firefighter, one of the things that I enjoyed doing was I used to help teach the EMT side, the medical side. Mm -hmm. And one of my students who's just a big old jacked up, like, this is just the guy you don't screw with. I don't care yeah. who you are. You see him, you're like, I'm not going to start a fight with that guy. Uh -uh. And uh, <laughs> and I was really small back then. And so I was kind of intimidated, but he ended up joining my group, the group that I was teaching. Oh. And we kind of started to get to know one another and things like that. And uh, now, almost 20 years later, we're, we're best friends and brothers, business partners. We do life together. My wife knows anything that happens to me. He's one of the first phone calls because he's going to immediately, he's going to immediately start connecting the dots. How can I help? How can this be done? You know, stuff like that. We call on each other, whatever. But anyways, um, he, uh, he comes in one day, he's got a black eye and the other side of his face is bruised. And the first thing out of my mouth was what happened to the other guy? And he's kind of just, <laughs> he just, Hey, no joke, nonchalantly. He just sat back. He's like, what are you talking about? Maybe what am I talking about? Ain't nobody got away with doing that to you, dude. Yes. And uh, he looks at me. He goes, oh, you're talking about my face. I'm like, yeah, the big old black eye, the mark over here. And uh, he just erupts into laughter. And of course, anybody that's in martial arts knows where I'm going with this. It was his sparring partner. He was actually getting ready for an MMA fight. Yeah, and uh, they got a little <laughs> overzealous and uh, went a little bit more than the 10 20 percent yeah. they had agreed upon, and you know, ended yeah. in a black eye. And I just like I said, Wait, you I, now I don't even care about that. You, you do what now? 
He goes, well, I do MMA. I said, so you do the UFC stuff, right? Again, I didn't really fully, like I knew what karate was and I knew that, nunchucks, sword, all that stuff, but didn't know the terminal. He looks at me, he goes, well, I'm not in the UFC, but yes, I do the UFC stuff. Yeah. Dude, do you teach it? He goes, yeah. Ah. Well, uh, one of the things was, for some reason, one of the things about EMT is it's tough to pass. It's really tough, to, especially back then, the, the way that Kansas did the testing was tough yeah. for good reason. Yeah. But um, their class, uh, when they graduated, for some reason, the test was held off by a month. And I was known for helping students afterwards with their practicals. And uh, he said, Hey, he goes, do you charge for that? I was like, no, I don't, I don't, I don't charge. He goes, well, he goes, you know what? Screw it. He goes, let's just make a deal. You, you stick with me, keep me going so I can pass. He goes, and, and maybe, and I was already on the fire department. He said, maybe you can help me get on the fire department. I'll teach you to fight. Cool. Wow. And so, you know, after being told no and growing up, Bruce Lee, you know, Jean-Claude Van Damme and Chuck Norris and, you know, everyone else on TV and movies and then watching the UFC, I started to train and we started with stand up because I, I love stand up. That's that is my go to. I love Muay Thai. I love kickboxing. I love kicking and hitting. Love it. Wow. Wow. Um, I joked about being OK with getting hit in the face. I'm not OK with it, but I'd rather do it than run. But still, yeah. Um, <laughs> But uh, anyway, so we started developing on that. And then we started to develop jujitsu. And then he started introducing me to other people in our community. And then we started going to different schools and I uh, got a gi. Uh, like I said, I never belt tested. I do regret that because I've got 10 years worth in me. Uh, but I just couldn't stay healthy enough yeah. to do a lot of the physically, a lot of the things that would be required. So I was just like, you know what? I'm going to learn this so I can fight in the cage. Well, every time I'd get fight ready, and I mean fight ready, like I was in shape, in tone, I'd have made weight. My skills were up, you know, a bit entry level, but still, yes, I, my, knee, my knees would give out or my back would give out. And with being a fireman, I couldn't, like, I said, guys, I still got to go to the station tomorrow. I got to be ready to possibly, you know, put out a fire or do whatever. I can't, I can't have this. And so I, I never actually fought. I did a lot of sparring, a lot of training, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of fun. Um, and then uh, it just, it got to the point where I just physically couldn't do it anymore. I still support the community. I still love the community. I'm still a part of a lot of it. Uh, cool. I did a lot of uh, uh, assistant coaching, you know, cornering, stuff like that. Love it. Uh, and it just, it's just one of those things that my son, uh, my oldest did it with me for a while. He actually did compete in a couple of jujitsus in a judo tournament. That was, that was our mainstay here was judo, jujitsu, and the Muay Thai uh, for the groups that I was with. And then my middle son, uh, he got into Taekwondo. My daughter kind of tried it, but was too young and screwed around a lot. And so it's kind of like, this isn't for you, but, uh, Josh really got into it. And, uh, you know, I was thinking about life's lessons and everything. You're making the comment about white belt to black belt. And there's a quote up on there. I can't remember who's credited for it, but it says a white belt is a black belt that just never gave up. Beautiful. And I feel like that sums up martial arts, no matter which discipline you're in. Lasted. It just martial artist or martial artist. And I know not everybody completes it. Not everyone gets their bell or, you know, if you're young, you start it, you quit. Maybe you come back, maybe you don't, or as an adult, it's something you try and go, yeah, this isn't for me. But for me personally, those perspectives of it's, it's not about just an instant gratification. It's a process. It's a, it's a, Absolutely. it's a development. It's a community. It's, it's a life. It's a lifestyle. If you really get down to it, if you're really going to get involved in it. And that really just has always kind of just been my love for it. Even mm -hmm. I knew that even without having done it, I knew that Chuck Norris didn't become Chuck Norris overnight. Yes. Bruce Lee didn't become Bruce Lee overnight. Absolutely. You know, um, you know, and John Clive and Damn, you know, all those guys, they didn't become that overnight. Mm -hmm. And so there's just something that really just, even though I never really thought about it until you asked me this. Uh, it's really just one more thing that, you know, they always say, if you want to be great, do hard things. Mm -hmm. Test yourself. If you really want to test yourself, go get kicked. Okay. <laughs> or even just learn how to kick. Screw getting kicked. Learn how to kick because there are certain ways to do it. And I, I mean, the first time I did it, my, Tad, my buddy that was first trained me, he goes, all right, because you're going to throw this kick and you're going to do it like this. I want your shin to come over. Your hips got to go forward. You're lean back. I was like, you Move want my back. body... Yeah, you want my body to do what? He goes, yeah, when you're doing it, you're going to be standing on this toe and you're going to come around this way and I want that bag to go slap. Yeah. It didn't go slap. I went splat on the floor. He started laughing. <laughs> he goes, that's not how you do it. I looked at him and I said, 
it's going to be a long night. And he goes, for you, it is. He goes, for me, it's going to be funny. I said, you're not recording this, are you? He goes, I'm thinking about it. It's like, don't, please. I'm begging you, don't. He goes, I won't. But, you know, but it is, it just, it, it just brings to mind the disciplines we have to have. You know, it goes back to your question of, you know, are we born with it or are we trained? Well, you know, it, you always hear people, oh, he's a born fighter. He's a born fighter. It's not always a good thing. He's just walking around punching people in the face because there's that. But if we can train and develop it, and we can hone that in. Yeah, sure. Some of the greatest fighters out there, some of the guys are like, yeah, if it hadn't been for uh, me uh, getting stuck in a dojo or in a school or, you know, having such and such black belt come up to me and put some discipline in my life, I'd still be punching people out in an alleyway, you know, things <laughs> like that. But you hear those stories and it's so encouraging to me. That's where my love for it comes is, is yeah. there's a certain discipline comes to it. That's one of the things I, I joke with my wife about the running thing. You know, I, I'm not a runner, but there is a certain yeah. discipline that comes from doing doing a 5k it's, doing a 10k doing a half a doing a full she's done an ultra she's done 50 miles wow. you know there's disciplines that come in this yeah yeah she wants to that's do more but hard. yeah but that's the thing I, I when you choose to do hard things and you choose to take the challenges of life yeah you get success and greatness out of it as long as you put in the time and the work you train develop on you train your brain to say this is mm -hmm. going to suck for a little bit yeah. but i can overcome it there's not anybody yeah. that hasn't belted up in martial arts that'll sit here and say, yeah, get my blue yeah. belt sucked, but you know what? Getting my brown belt was even worse. Yes. Getting yes. the purple, that getting the black, you know, or, or, you know, however your belting system goes, but you know, yeah. it, at, at any level it could have sucked, but you know what? I just worked that much harder and it sucked a lot less. And now look at me. And so that's really kind of a big sum of my life and my love of martial arts, because I feel like, of all the sport that's out there, that's one of, one of, not all, but one of the ones that really just epitomizes that, you know what, it can suck in the moment, but it's going to be worth it. Beautiful. I, I, I saw that happening, you know, in my mind's eye. And you were talking about getting his, you know, his face was blue. <laughs> he had a black eye. I went to, I went to class one week and then on the, the, um, the following night, I had Bible study. So now, of course, oh. I'm, in the ministry. <laughs> I'm in the ministry, and yeah, I come to Bible study, and I've got this black eye, but I'm trying to hide it now with the makeup, you know, but I, I'm not thinking about it. I can feel it, but I forgot about it. And during the whole Bible study, I notice everybody keeps looking at me, you know, and they, they look uncomfortable. And after the, the um, you know, the Bible study, we sat and we had some coffee and, you know, we chatted and I, the one lady was looking, but she was looking to, you know, she wasn't even hiding that she was looking and she was up, you know, trying to see what's wrong. And then, and then I realized what was going on and I said, yes, I have a black eye. And they're all like, oh, you know, what happened? I said, no, it's training. Uh, you know, we get punched in the face there and I've had black eyes and bloody noses and torn knuckles and uh, sore ankles, but that's part of, that is part of the body conditioning. So, but people always, they think something else is wrong, but it's just training, you know, it makes us stronger. But um, your wife, your wife is definitely uh, someone that, that's a leader and that also perseveres because I don't think I'd ever run 50 miles. Really, I just want to commend her on that. That takes a lot of discipline. That's her sport. That's what she loves is running. Well, you know, I always, I always joke that I actually had it the worst that day. I had to drive around the car with all the snacks and the water and put up with helping <laughs> her change her shoes. I mean, it was like, it was so difficult for me, you know, no. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I will say this. It was emotionally challenging because, yeah. you know, I couldn't drive with her. I had to trust that the miles in between, because you only can go to so many stops and things like that. But I had to trust in the Lord. I knew there was other people on the trail. She'd be safe and stuff yeah, like that. But so there were there were times where, you know, I, I had to channel my inner coach and loving, supportive husband where she was like, I, I just, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's like, no, you can't. You've already made it this far. You might as well finish now. Right. And, and I Absolutely. say that lovingly because, uh, you know, that's one of the things that how we support each other, you know, is, is just... You know, she, when, when she came into the picture, I already had a son. I was already on the fire department. I was already a youth pastor. I was working other jobs. I was also doing the MMA thing. Um, yeah. And she, you know, she had to take that on. And so, but it was like seeing her support structure for me, I support her. We joke and mess with each other. She's like, she actually did try martial arts a little bit with me. She's like, yeah, this isn't for me. 
I'd rather go run. I was like, well, you go run. I'll go get punched in the face and we'll call it even because <laughs> she has honestly, there's times during her trainings, she looked worse off than I did after getting beat up by guys yeah. twice my size, you know? And yeah. so, but you know, and I don't say that to scare people, martial arts, just say, just go learn, go learn something different, something new. You talked about the bruising, this firefighter slash MMA story. I love sharing. <laughs> uh, we had a couple guys getting ready for title fights and yeah. it was fight week. And, uh, we were a smaller gym and I was one of the only ones who knew how to hold the kick pad. Yeah. Anybody who knows, especially Muay Thai and kickboxing, holding the kick oh, pad yes. is a sucky job, especially <laughs> when two of your guys are experts at kicking and it's one of their favorite <laughs> things to do. And you were the one that just got done punching them in the face, getting them ready for their fights and frustrating them on the ground. So now they get their chance to take it out on you. And I don't yeah. care that pad may be four inches thick and curved. It still hurts. You still feel it. And so for an hour that night, I had to hold that pad for the round robin of kicks, getting our guys ready for the kicks, leg conditioning, leg conditioning, leg conditioning. Well, I didn't think about the fact I had to be at the station the next morning. And even more so, I didn't think about the bruising I had from the top of my quads down to my knees. And I mean, they were nasty bruises. It wasn't even blue. It was just straight black. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, you're like, well, but you were holding the kick pad. It doesn't matter. The vibration goes through. It hurts. Yes. <laughs> and so, and the thing is, it wasn't, it wasn't painful after the fact, you know, I mean, yeah. stretching or squatting wasn't, wasn't the best feeling on planet earth, but I was fine for doing my job is my point. You know, I yeah. said, I wouldn't, yeah. if I couldn't keep doing something functionally, I wouldn't do it. And so I, I sat down and I forgot about the fact that I was wearing shorts and I'm going to sit down for the first time in front of everybody didn't think nothing of it. And they're all staring at like, you're talking about that lady. They're all staring at me, just staring at me. <laughs> and I'm like, did I like, what's, did I make you guys mad? Did I say, I'm sitting there thinking, I was like, I haven't even said good morning to these guys yet. I haven't even finished my, I don't say good morning to after I finished a cup of coffee. Kind of being yeah. like that. That's still the negativity, Chris, that comes through. But uh, anyways, I don't like mornings, <laughs> but uh, anyways, I sat there and also one of the guys starts to go like this. And I looked down, I said, oh yeah, you can touch it. It's not going to hurt. <laughs> what happened i was like well so for an hour i stood here holding this pad so they could kick it but they had to kick it with me holding it yeah why wait who does that i was like well it's fight week and the guys go yeah. i had to explain the whole process to them. they didn't understand and they're like but and you were okay with this yeah <laughs> you are more screwed up than we realized yes yes I am. <laughs> and i Take pride in that because that screwed yeah. up. This has been what's got me to where it's gotten me. And when I say screwed up, I don't, I don't mean it in a negative way. I mean, just no, I know it's exactly. that thinking out of the box. It's that, uh, it's that stepping up and stepping out and stepping into our greatness. And so those are the life yeah. lessons I've learned and how I've had fun being a part of conversations that I get to be a part of. So beautiful people uh, that do martial arts will understand what I say next. You will know this. The dojo becomes your second home. Oh, yeah, it absolutely, you know, it's, it's, I can say the same thing about a fire station. Firefighters will know the fire station is your second home and not just because you're living there a third of the time, but they become your second family. Um, absolutely. And same thing with the dojo, same thing with the gym. Yeah, I mean, I those guys could still call on me today and I'd still be there for them. So um, just like they'd be there for me. So, yeah, it's 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 a good deal. And it's such a fun thing. And that's when you build intentional community from that positive standpoint, that's what you're going to get. And that's mm-hmm. that's the best feeling in the world. It really is. I agree. I agree. We punch each other. We choke each other. And afterwards, we're friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You just got done hitting me in the face. Let's go get some coffee. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, plenty of breakfasts and plenty of pizzas after the fact of, man, dude, that right hook you threw. I'm going to feel that for the next couple of days. Oh, I know, man, but you threw that dang over, you know, you threw that dang spinning round kick, caught me with your dang heel. That's going to show up on my ribs later, you know, stuff like that. You know, yeah, that hook kick that caught me in the shoulder, that's going to hurt for a while. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That arm bar. Yeah. Still hurts right here. Yeah. have to be there to, to experience that absolutely yeah the i don't training. think we're i don't think we're doing great advertising for it right now 
<laughs> I wonder what people will be thinking, but really, it's very controlled. It's very controlled. It audience. is. It is. Kill each other. And it, it's not like you're doing that. If you're doing that, you're not doing that on the first night. Don't don't get involved in something where they're doing that first it night. But it, yeah. it does. It takes years. It takes practice. It takes time. It takes learning. But you can have you can have a lot of fun with it. So yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, the purpose of that is now after the years, I mean, you've been doing it much longer than I have, you know, you did it much longer than I have. Um, but now, you know, Chris, I've been punched in the face so many times. If someone punches me in the face now, I mean, it won't be such a fright and it won't really do so much damage, you know. So, and that's, that's really for self-defense. So, I mean, it does take years. Don't think you're going to go to the dojo, to the audience, and they're going to beat you up. That's not how it works. You kind of progress in your, in you, in your martial arts. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And that's, and I think that, you know, there's so many lessons that come from that because life's going to get you down, but it's, yeah. it's not the getting down, it's the getting back up. You know, mm -hmm. um, oh, I forgot. It's an old Chinese proverb. I can't remember who I'm quoting on this. So again, sorry, but it's mm -hmm. just, you know, get knocked down seven, get up eight. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, martial, martial, yes. martial arts can be tied to so many life lessons and that's one of them for me for sure so that was that was a huge part of our judo our, our judoko yeah. uh that's since uh, he was he's like listen get knocked down seven you get up eight let's go get up get up get up and you know uh don't give up like you mentioned you mentioned that don't yeah. give up and get up and don't give up just go back and uh, Wait another way yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, even when I was having some of the back and knee issues I was having, you know, with the jujitsu and the judo stuff, it was just, okay, well, Chris can't bend that way, so let's teach him this instead. Exactly. Oh, how wonderful that's cool. Is that? Thanks. That's and how, how, how much more different than that is life? You know, you brought up COVID. What did COVID really teach us as far as business and life? You got to, you know, the key word, it just became one of the key words people got tired of, but pivot. Yeah, you got to pivot. You got to pivot in life no matter what, no matter what life throws at you, whether it's, you know, something political, something financial, mm -hmm. something business, something, uh, you know, family related, uh, individually related, whatever. You just got to You got to pick yourself up. And that that can be easier said than done. I'm not mm -hmm. if you're caught in the thick of any of it. I'm sorry. I truly am. My prayers are with you, um, mm -hmm. but you can find it. I promise I'm living proof. Sounds like I'm going to speak for her. Juanita is as well. I would say that just because I've seen the yes. joy in her face as I've gotten to know her. Um, okay. You know, when 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 God brings incredible people together, incredible people do incredible things. And I believe that in her and I believe that for you. Anybody that's listening tonight, I know there's audio to this. So in case you're wondering, I just looked intently at the screen at you. Not to call you out, not to make you feel belittled, but to empower you to say you can. Yeah, beautiful. I mean to that. I mean to that. Um, we're talking martial arts, you know, um, we're talking life. We can bring those, those uh, principles through. So I want to ask you, uh, what is your favorite part of doing martial arts? What, what space did it fill in your life? Um, you know, and what's your favorite uh, style? You, you did, uh, you know, how to do kickboxing, you did MMA, you did jiu-jitsu. So what, what kind of, how, does, how has that changed you? Oh, that's uh, some big questions there. So uh, I'll answer the easiest one first. If I have to single out a discipline, it's Muay Thai. Oh, it's Muay Thai. It's uh, well, it, because honestly, and, and I'm not saying it's easy. It was just the easiest one for me. Yeah, I love elbowing. Uh, really, I love kicking. My, leg, so, my legs have always been my powerhouse. I love yeah. kicking. I love knees. I love punching. Um, yeah. I also love the back and forth of it. I'd say uh, jujitsu and judo were, were a close second for me. Uh, the yeah. reason why uh, in Muay Thai, other than if you go to throw a head kick, which I can't do because I'm not flexible at all. I've never once in a straight leg position touched my toes, which is why I struggled in jujitsu and judo. I didn't have the flexibility. Plain oh, and simple. I, I did not have the flexibility, but I can punch. And I can throw a good, yeah. I can go, I can throw mid and low kicks really well. I can throw knees. That was, that probably became one of my favorites was throwing the knees. <laughs> but also though, the bigger thing for me with martial arts from a, uh, getting angry Chris out is yeah. I mean, hitting the bag, hitting mm -hmm. the bag. Or if I have a sparring partner that, uh, you know, we're, we're not like angry at each other. We're not taking anger out on each other, but just somebody I just go back and forth with and just get yes. lost. You know, I even like, That's lovely. I, 
I play golf. Um, I'm not any good at it. I suck at it, but it's my <laughs> escape. When I go out there and I just hit that yeah, ball, everything else ceases to exist. It was the same thing with me with the with the Muay Thai and the kickboxing, yeah. or just, just even just you know, if my knees were hurting too much, I just punch the bag, punch the bag, throw a hook, yeah. you know, throw an uppercut, stuff like that, uh, throw some elbows, um, you know, things of that nature, just because it takes out that aggression, it takes it away mm -hmm. from me. And again, I'm not just speaking from like a angry uh, Hulk, you know, the Incredible yeah. Hulk anger type thing. As much as it is, just I just forget about everything around me. And I'm just in that moment. And that that's the big thing that martial arts was for me personally as a release. It was my release. And I could do the same thing jujitsu and judo, but I get so frustrated in the technicalities and especially the yeah, lack of yeah. flex flexibility. I, I would it would kind of take me out of that space a little bit. I had great instructors and, and great um, co-students to 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 learn with. So it was it was yeah. nice that we could still, you know, do that flow and grapple and roll together and have fun with yeah. it. Uh, but I think the other thing too with martial arts is uh, it's the greatest solo team sport out there. I love it. Yeah. Because, you know, when you're fighting, if, you, if you're if you actually fighting, you're, you're kind of on your own. It's a solo sport. It's a solo development sport. You can't just like, you know, uh, you know, uh, snap the ball and throw it to the receiver. Yeah. You got to throw, you got to throw the hook. You got to throw the jab. You got to throw the low leg kick. You got to throw the combinations, but you still have a team with you who's teaching you and guiding you and you can learn from. So that's why I would say it's the greatest solo team sport on planet earth. Um, but there's also so many things you can take from it, which we talked about earlier. You know, the, the white belt is a black belt or excuse me, a black belt is a white belt that never gave up. Yes. I mean. um, you know, and there's, and there's always the foundationals. Yes. You can get into the technical stuff. You can, mm -hmm. uh, you know, change up your chokes. You can change up your grips and stuff like that and, and gain different advantages, but ultimately it's still going to fall back on. You got to have solid foundation. That's the same thing in life. Um, you know, we say this as firefighters and I'd say this in martial arts. I say this in life, whatever you last and most focused trained on is going to be what you fall back on. Mm -hmm. True. Wow. So, you wow. know, if you, if you try and just get too technical and just try and overcomplicate things mm -hmm. and you have to fall back on something, you're going to fall back on that foundation. Well, what's mm -hmm. it going to look like? So if you forget to work on your foundation, you forget to work on your basics. Right. That's one of the things I always, I always loved about our gym and, and most gyms I know of, they always start with the basics. Like that's the warm up is basics. And, and, you know, you get it's some new people totally in and be like, good. Yep. Oh it's God, we did this. Yeah, we did this last week. There's a reason for it. There's a reason yeah. why you lost all last week. Yeah. And you're going to lose yeah. again this week until you yeah. learn that lesson. And it's the same thing in life. <laughs> life is going to keep hitting you until you learn and go, you know what? I don't like getting hit in the face. So maybe I should parry that jab. Or maybe I could just yes. move my head to the left and not get hit. <laughs> yeah, keep my hands up. Keep your hands up. You know, stuff like that. Same thing in life. Same thing in business. Same thing in leadership learn and then take action on learning it. It's not always going to be perfect. It's not going to go ugly and you're still going to get hit in the face from time to time. Mm -hmm. but how are you going to get up from it? And I, that's just, that was really a true love of martial arts. And that was the other cool thing to having an uncle and a friend that his friend that were in it was not only, you know, did I kind of, as a kid, idolize Chuck and uh, wow. Bruce and, and John Claude, but you know, I also did learn that, listen, they didn't get to this without working hard. I mean, they didn't get to this without trying. They didn't get to this without learning life lessons. And, uh, you know, so I got to see them do that. Like, listen, you know, your black belt's not just handed it to you. You know, you can't, you can just go online and buy one, but you're going to get exposed real dang quick if that's what you did. And so, again, it's the same thing with life. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And, uh, you know, that speaks to, to the next question that I wanted to ask. It, you know, it's, it's physically, it's emotionally, it's spiritually, and you, you actually answered that because when we go to the dojo, we are actually ministered to in all of those arenas. Um, it's stress relief, but it's more than that. It's, it's something that also builds our relationship with the Lord. I, I, uh, I'm a pastor, but I do martial arts and people frowned upon me because they thought, you know, if you do martial arts, uh, automatically you bow to something else. And I really had to break that misconception for people because it's not that. Um, so thank you for, for bringing the world of martial arts to the audience so that they can understand what it signifies to us. And we do the basics 
10,000 times. And you are right, it is, there is a reason because it becomes a part of our muscle memory and you mentioned our foundation. I mean, what would a structure be without a foundation? You always have to get back to the basics in anything. You mentioned leadership, you mentioned family, you mentioned martial arts. So thank you so much for, for sharing that with us. It's uh, beautiful. It's like music to my ears. And that brings us to the last two questions. Uh, I want to ask you, what is next for you? How can we support you? What are your programs that you are running or anything that you are busy with or starting? How can we support you and elevate you? You know, uh, one, share this episode. Share this episode. There's so much Juanita and I covered today and life and business, leadership, martial arts. Uh, but more than anything, we shared hope. Amen. We shared Amen. hope. Our lives are a living testimony. I always tell people that my story is his, as in God's story on my Amen. life, which is my history. And wow. maybe it didn't speak directly to you. Maybe it did. Either way, share it. Share it. Don't don't just share it because, you know, here here I am. I'm getting ready to promote myself and say how you can reach out to me, my programs, which Juanita is graciously letting me do. As much as it is, share that hope. Even if even if they just hear one of the one of the segments in this time that we've been on here together, done this episode together, even if they just hear that one thing, like, man, I feel better. Oh my gosh, you know, he's right. I should smile more. Then go do that. Go do that. If, if you want to get more involved, learn more about my consulting projects, my personal development leadership projects, you can email me, Chris, at eaglefireenrichment.com. That's one word. Um, we'll provide, you know, we'll have, link, I'll have links over to Juanita for that. Um, yeah, I'll be, uh, you know, if you connect with me on social media, uh, again, the links will be there, but you can just type in Chris Tice, T-I-C-E. It'll be there. Uh, my book will be forthcoming. I'll be launching a pre-sale before long, so people will be able to purchase that ahead of time, which will go into more detail the things we talked about today. Um, I do get into the technical aspects, but also get into the personal development aspects. So, yeah, that's that's really the bigger parts of some things I'm doing right now. And if you check me out on social media channels, you'll see all the different businesses and things I'm involved in and get to do. It's it's really is incredible. And then, yeah, just a reminder, um, you know, if there's some things functionally you're really looking to or, or really want to learn more about that holistic healing uh, that is not my area directly. I refer everybody over to the Dosera Life Center for a reason. You heard my reason. It's not yeah. just because I'm partnered up with them. I am a living testimony to them. And most yes. importantly, most importantly, what do I want you to get out of this? Keep your faith in God. If you're struggling, start praying. If you're struggling, ask for help. Get some guidance. Reach out to people you know. You want to reach out to me, I'll throw you a prayer. If you want to go further than that, then we'll take it further than that. But, you know, reach out to Juanita, reach out to the people next to you. If it's, you know, if you're part of a martial arts group, whoever your inner circle is that you know can help you, reach out to them and keep God at the center of it. There's going to be times you're going to slip, you're going to fall down in the water, there's going to be times you freak out during the storm. Just know he's got your back. Those are the things I'm a part of, those things I'm doing, the reason why I'm here. I get to help people. Most importantly, I get to share the love of Jesus with people. Yeah. I absolutely thank you so much uh, to the audience. I mean, this is authentic leadership at its best. Um, Chris really has a heart for people. He really has a heart for God. And he really wants to uplift your life and edify you through everything that he's busy with. And God has anointed him to do these things. So follow him on social media. We're going to make all his social media handles available on the post as well. You know, network with him and connect with him and learn and grow with him. And from meticulous moments, I just want to say, Chris, this was a phenomenal session. I loved every moment. Thank you so much for blessing us. Thank you. This has been fun. I, uh, you know, just just from your first reach out to to wanting a virtual coffee with me and how we've connected, how God connected us. Um, yeah, it's a whole other story for another time. But uh, just you know, just it's just amazing how God works, and I'm beyond blessed to be on meticulous moments. Uh, you know, folks, if this is your first episode, go listen to the others. I know Juanita's heart is good. So anything she's going to do or produce or be a part of is good. I know some of the other guests she's had personally, and I know they're good too. So uh, just I, um, you know, my closing comment is always go out and make every day great because you really can. You can. Why? Because the next thing I tell everybody is can't never did. It never did anything for you. Trust me. Please trust me in that. If there's anything you've heard in this is can't never did. There's hope. And just remember, yeah. God blesses us all. He really does. Just got to seek him. Thank you. I mean, 
I agree. Thank you so much, Chris. Wonderful words of wisdom is going to stay with us as we go into the rest of our week. And we are going to live that. Absolutely. Thank you very, very much. Amen. Thank you. And God bless you. Amen. And to the Meticulous Moments audience, thank you for joining us for this lovely session. Please share it. Send out that hope that we've spread here this evening and have left someone else's life. You never know. You might just be the changing agent in someone else's life. And with that, we'll see you at the next episode. Goodbye.